Hello, my name is Autumn Botani and I'm a principal consultant here at Page Data. Today I'm going to show you how to make custom sorting, table headers, and Tableau. I posted the dashboard you're seeing on the screen now for email marketing campaigns earlier this week and got a lot of questions about how to set up your table headers like this and it's easier than you think and adds a lot of flexibility to your standard table. But just wanted to start off by showing you what the end result will be. So what happens is you will click on these different triangles and they will sort the columns accordingly. So let's jump right in. I've only gone ahead and done two things. One is to make my table. That's this one. It's pretty similar to the one you just saw, however, text instead of bars. The other is connect to a second data source. The second data source is super simple. It only has six values in it. There's one field called field, which has the values negative one, zero, and one. And there's a value called shape, which has the words down, transparent, and up accordingly. This will help provide structure to the headers that we're going to build. So the first step is to bring in field and put it on rows. It's going to come in automatically uh, aggregated, so we're just going to change this to a dimension. Next, we are going to change our mark type to shape and put the shape field on shape. Also, as far as selecting the shapes, it's pretty simple. For down, we will be choosing a down arrow. For up, we will be choosing an up arrow. And for transparent, we will be choosing a transparent shape. So we can already see a little bit of the structure uh, coming together here. Now we are going to make separate columns to show respectively for what our table looks like. I have six, so I'm going to go ahead and make those now. To do this, I'm going to use uh, ad hoc or inline calcs to do this. You can do actual calculated fields if you want to. However, since these will be single use, I'm just going to go ahead and make them in the view. So I'm going to choose min 1.0. It's a great trick, but I'm actually going to go one step further and name this. The way you do this is edit and shelf. In front of the calc, you're going to put a couple backslashes and then what you want the name of it to be. So in this case, I want it to be campaign. That is the first column in my table. I'm going to press shift and enter to move the calc down to a new row and enter to close out. So now we can see if I just undo that really quickly, the pill went from being named min 1.0 to campaign. I'm going to duplicate this five more times because I have five more columns. The way I can do this is by pressing command and just dragging this across. But I need to rename these to what my columns are, so I'm going to do that quickly by editing and shelf. I'm just changing this. The first one is delivered, I believe, and then sent. Open. Clicked. And unsubscribe. Uh, another great thing about this is it really cleans up these marks cards over here. So I now know which one belongs to which column. The next thing that we're going to do is edit the axes. So you see they're over to the right. We want to move them over to the left to allow room for the labels. I like to do uh, a fixed axis of 0.8 to 2.2. So as you can see, that moves that all the way over. That gives us room to put the actual label in, which we will do right after this. I'm sure you guys can see my concentration face in this little window. Uh, we are going to be repeating a lot of these steps across. So they're all very simple, but have to be done a couple times, normally one for each column. But I have a couple tricks to minimize that, which I will tell you uh, in a second as soon as I finish up this last axis. Great. So now we're going to add the labels. Um, one thing we're going to have to do here that was already calculation for. The reason for this is we don't want the labels to show up across all of the shapes. We just want them to be in the center. But I'm actually going to write this calculation on all to begin with. And what this is going to read as is if the shape is 
transparent, then in this case, we're just doing, going to do campaign because that's our first one. And I'm going to put this on label. And as we see, it comes up right in the center there, just how we want it, but it does say campaign all across. So we're going to have to go into each and edit it. But the nice thing of doing it on all first is I actually only need to edit that word because the structure of the calc is going to be consistent across all of the columns. It's just the word that's changing. So this one is sent. Again, you know, it's really nice to have these clean headers for the marks cards here because I know easily this says open, so I know this one's going to be opened. And I don't have to do too much guesswork on which column is which because sometimes I can get a little messy. Now, one thing I'm sure you're seeing already is that the alignment is a little off, so we're going to go fix that now by going back to all and on the alignment, set it to right and center. And now they're all in a pretty streamlined place across. The next thing we're going to want to do is set up our parameters. We're going to need two parameters to do this. The first parameter is going to dictate which column or which measure we'll be doing the sorting. The second parameter will dictate which order, so whether it's ascending or descending. These are pretty simple. The first one is going to be a string. And we're just going to call this clear all really quick, and we're going to set it to all. We're going to call this sort field. So this one's going to tell us which field we are sorting by. Um, and then the next one we can call sort order, because this is the order that it's in. And for this, we're just going to do a list, which is negative one or one. So those are the two options we are going with. Now we're going to add color. Now this is an optional step, you don't have to do this, but I think this is really nice because it allows the user to easily see which column is being sorted and in which direction at all times, as opposed to guessing. We're going to do a, a similar trick to what we did with the labels, which is do it on all and then adjust small pieces uh, for each column. This is going to be a true false statement and it's going to use both of the parameters that we just created. So the first piece is going to read that the sort order is equal to field and the sort field is equal to, in this case, we're going to use campaign. We just need a starter one. And we're going to stick that on color. They all say false, and that is because our sort field doesn't have a current value. So if we set it to campaign, we're getting true and false. So I like to set the true to be a dark gray, this one in Seattle grays, and the false to be a light gray, but you can pick whatever colors you'd like. If you want this to be something a little more vibrant, we can choose this pink or maybe this green even would be fun. And now we just have to go through and adjust in each column. So in this one, we just need to change campaign to delivered. Here we're changing it to sent. I'm sure you can see what I meant by some repetitive steps, but like I said, they're all pretty simple. This one's opened. And I'm subscribed. So now if I were to show this parameter, and change what this said. Let's put it opened. The green arrow jumped over here, clicked, green arrow jumped over here. So we're seeing it's working out already. Uh, and over here, let's do just a little bit of formatting. I don't love the lines, so I'm gonna uh, unshow the header on the axes. Go up to format, borders, take off both the row and column dividers. And let's make the triangles a little bigger. We can do this on size here. That looks a little bit nicer to me. Also, maybe a little bit easier to see the color changing. So I'll just 
go back to opened and we can see that move over. Uh, the next step that we are going to do is create the calculation for the sort on our original data source. So I'm going to go here, back to my table, create a calculated field, sort campaigns, because that's the header, uh, our case statement. is going to be that sort parameter. And it could either be campaign, sent, delivered, opened, clicked, unsubscribed. I know I probably write case statements a little bit different than what you're used to seeing. I like to do the pieces together. It just works that way in my mind. So I'm going to write through thens. And then the other part of this case statement is just what the field is going to be. So it's going to be the campaign ID when it's on campaign. The sent emails when it's on sent. Delivered emails when on delivered. Open. Click. And then unsubscribe clicks. And I'm going to go ahead and actually put in aggregation in here. And that's because I just think it's easier. Also, I want it to be min for the campaign ID and sum for the rest of them. But if you were going to have a consistent aggregation across all of them, you can do it outside of this calc if you wanted to. We're actually nearing, uh, nearing the end. As you can see, a lot of repetitive steps were all pretty simple. So this calculation is valid. That's what we like to see. I'm just going to press OK. Oh, except I forgot one important part, which is at the end, we are going to multiply this by our sort order, which means when the sort order is one, it's going to go in one direction. But if the sort order is negative one, it's going to go in the other direction. This is what's going to allow us to sort the same column by either ascending or descending. Then we're going to go to our campaign field, sort. And we're going to sort by a field. I'm going to find that one that we just made. So I'm going to sort in the name, sort campaigns. It's a custom aggregation and ascending is fine. And now we're going to bring these pieces together. So I'm just going to make a dashboard here. Bring out a vertical container. Put our headers at the top. Brings in all these extra pieces. We'll get rid of those in a second. Our table at the bottom. The way I like to get rid of these is just select the whole column, float it, and then I move it very far away. So 1300, that way all of those pieces are there if I need them, but they're not visible. And the only extra things that we need to do still are to uh, add the dashboard actions. The first parameter action is going to change the sort field on headers. It's going to, like I said, parameter is going to change the sort field. And it's going to be measure names. The aggregation is none and clearing the selection will keep the current value. The check second parameter action is going to change the sort order. Click sort order. These ones are going to stay the same of running on select and clear in this section will keep the current value. This one is going to be field. Oops, I selected wrong one though. Field, no aggregation. And then I'm also going to disable the highlighting by going to highlight. OK. 
Okay, and if I did that correctly, uh, it should work now, so let's see. If I click here, let me just turn off the tool tips so it's easier to see. Oof, that was got a little messy anyways. If I click here, it seems to be doing its job. So, there you go, that's how you set it up. All it needs now is just some additional formatting. As you can see, these don't line up. The way I like to correct for that is normally just playing around with the padding uh, on these containers a little bit, but then you will have one like this. So I hope uh, you found this tutorial helpful and easy. I hope this will help you deliver more solutions for your users, and I can't wait to see you guys use it.